to get to let's get to it holy smokes first don't forget to get your ticket for our event on the 15th it will be lots of fun um, and so i won't spend too much time on it moving forward sarah look, we'll talk about c11 first we'll talk about c11 first because they rushed this through and yesterday at two o'clock i hoped that sarah was wrong but she was not wrong they did rush this through trudeau and singh are going to ram through c11 online censorship today they've suspended the house of commons debate neither deserve to stand uh, to serve in a free economy or a free democracy excuse me and uh She's not wrong. She's not wrong. Michael Geist um, says liberal and NDP MPs combined today to shut down debate on Bill C-11. Here's the reality. Notwithstanding claims user content is out of the bill, the Senate disagreed and proposed a fix consistent with Pablo Rodriguez's stated objectives. He rejected the fix. The heart of today's vote is the government's rejection of the Senate Bill C-11 amendment. Their official rationale makes the reason clear. Pablo Rodriguez wants to retain the right to regulate user content today and in the future. Um, Michael Geis says the unofficial reason from Pablo Rodriguez and Lisa, um, whoever that is, uh, for rejecting Bill C-11's amendment is even worse as they claim the amendment would would create loopholes. This is not only blatantly false, but deeply offensive to Canadian digital creators. Yeah, this week's House debate has succeeded in demonstrating what is really at play with Bill C-11. As Block MP said the quiet part out loud, there is an impact of freedom of expression, but the government prioritizes Quebec culture policy over those harms. So it's very, very deeply troubling what's going on with free speech in Canada. And we are being silenced and already censored. We're massively censored. You're censored online. I'm censored online. Um, Here is Pierre Polyev talking about um, the censorship. Uh, He gets a question asked of him and he talks for a few minutes about censorship. Um, And he says in this tweet, he says, when the citizen has to go... the." When the citizen has to go to the bureaucrats for permission to speak, the citizen becomes the servant and not the master. Stop Trudeau's censorship law. And here it is. A section 2B. Free expression is valued above all as being instrumental to democratic governance. So my question to the leader of opposition who is committed to killing this bill, whether now or when he is prime minister, with the day that I look forward to would happen very, very soon, that why would the prime minister of uh, of the Liberal Party would actually want to bring in this type of censorship is it because he admires communist dictatorships? I'm going to let Margaret Atwood answer that question. Here's what she said, and I quote, she described the CRTC as, quote, the shadowy body that lurks in the background. Their secret? How many of them are there? Or what do they actually do? And furthermore, and directly to the member's question, All you have to do is, and she's commenting specifically on this bill, all you have to do is read some biographies of writers writing in the Soviet Union and the degrees of censorship they had to go through, government bureaucrats. So it is creeping totalitarianism if governments are telling creators what to create. So, um, Canada Poly, maybe change is coming. I don't know. I hope I can continue to do my show the way I have been able to do my show since 2018. Uh, We will find out, I suppose. Rachel Thomas says, Bill C-11 gives the Liberal government the power to determine what you see and hear and post online. Help us kill Bill C-11, sign the petition. So it's already passed, um, but we'll listen to this 40 seconds. Here we go. Is no culture without freedom of expression. Just to point out the disinformation from that member. He says all artists support this. Well, even Margaret Atwood, no conservative, has said that this bill represents creeping totalitarianism. Creeping totalitarianism. It gives the power to a woke agency, the CRTC, named by liberals, to manipulate social media algorithms in order to shut down voices it does not want people to hear. When will this government realize that Orwell's 1984 was not an instruction manual? Is no but they are using it as an instruction manual, aren't they? Um, and, and they're cracking down very hard. Here's Polyev doing a little walking video. He says, urgent breaking news. Trudeau's team moments ago moved to shut down debate and ram through his online censorship bill. We're still fighting, but I need your help now. Um, so he explains what they did procedurally. We can listen. Here we go. Hi, everyone. Pierre Polyev here. Uh, There's just an emergency here in Parliament Hill. The Liberals have just announced that they're shutting down debate. They're censoring debate on their censorship bill. 
Uh, we just got the notice right now. As you know, they've been trying to censor the internet in what Canadian artist Margaret Atwood is called creeping totalitarianism. So give Trudeau's woke bureaucrats over at CRTC the power to control what you see and say on the internet. I'm just uh, rushing into the House of Commons lobby right now. Conservatives are the only party fighting back. Uh, but as you can see, uh, this uh, closure is now being brought right before us right now. You see right here, online streaming act. They're bringing in what's called closure, which shuts down debate and rams the bill through in record time. Only conservatives are fighting back against this censorship bill. We believe you should have the freedom to decide what you see and say online, but I need you to immediately sign my freedom of speech petition. I don't know about signing a petition. I've been signing petitions. Actually, I don't sign petitions because they don't do anything. I signed petitions in 2015 and 16 and 18 and 19. And you know what they did? Nothing. Nothing. I'm not signing petitions. Anyway, uh, Polyev and um, he says the coalition passed the censorship bill just now after shutting down debate. What now? And so he talks about what now. Here's just a minute of it. All right, we're on. We've got some bad news. Real quiet, uh, the I guess. Girls in coalition with the NDP and Bloc have just passed the censorship bill out of the House of Commons. I'm here with the great Rachel Thomas, who's been fighting against this censorship bill all along. The good news is that the fight is not over. What happens next? Well, what happens next, it goes back to the Senate. Um, they will have to debate it there and determine whether or not they want to fight for the amendments that they felt were necessary to begin with. Um, if they decide to amend it, of course, we'll see it back here in the House of Commons. If they decide not to amend it, then unfortunately it will go forward and become legislation. Okay, so this is the way it bounces to the Senate. We have some real free speech warriors there, led by Leo. <sighs> So the hope is that the Senate's going to save us. They pushed it through in the second reading. I don't think the Senate's going to save us. Here is um, Pierre Polyev talking about liberal snobs for infantilizing Canadians. Here we go. Does he believe, as the leader of the Conservative Party, that it's the government, the bloc, the NDP, and the Green Party trying to prevent individuals from uploading cat videos on Facebook? The Honorable Leader of the Opposition. Do I believe that the government wants to limit people in putting cat videos online? Of course not. But his question is very, very telling. Because first of all, it is designed as everything that this government says to make the people feel small, to tell them that they're really only concerned about cat videos. Mr. Speaker, the people of Canada are smarter than that. They're not idiots. The people of Canada they post poetry online. They post music. They post beautiful stories. They share their most beautiful moments online. To distill that all down to cat videos is once again an insult by a liberal snob on the common people to suggest that they're interested only in frivolous and stupid things that need to be filtered out by a class of much more elite people. Madam Speaker, we believe in the common sense of the common people, and we believe they have the judgment to choose what they should post and what they should read and what they should do online. Thank you. Pretty wild stuff. Pretty wild stuff. They're looking, honestly, at censoring the internet. It's crazy. Here, Leo Husaka says, Justin Trudeau wants to control what you see online. With C-11, they will control what counts as Canadian. With C-18, they will control what counts as real news. Today in the Senate, I explained how ridiculous and dangerous C-18 is for Canadians. So I'm sure there's going to have some kind of takedown. You're not news. I'm going to have to have some kind of banner that says, not news. That's okay. <laughs> not news. Sure, not news, Mark. I'm just an opinion, opinionated guy, that's all. Um, but it's very, very interesting how they can't win the argument at all. They're losing the argument at every single turn. Men can't be women. That's one. Um, and so in order to make sure that the people don't realize that they're in the majority who oppose this, they will censor the internet to make you think that really everybody's just, everything's fine. Everybody believes exactly what the government says. Safe and effective. No heart attacks or strokes or anything like that. Nope. Everything's good. Um, just don't ask questions. And if you do, you'll be off to re-education camps right, soon enough. Um, Pierre Polyev talking about family ties and ethics. Holy smoke. He says, what's the best way for a liberal to avoid another guilty verdict under the ethics law? Make his sister-in-law the ethics commissioner. Brilliant. So here is, uh, here's that. 
So for the Emergencies Act Commission, they named a Liberal staffer as the independent commissioner. For the foreign interference rapporteur, they named the Prime Minister's ski buddy and member of the Trudeau Foundation. And now they needed someone to be the ethics commissioner, so they named a Liberal minister's sister-in-law wow. to that position of independent ethics commissioner, the same minister who's already been found guilty of violating the law. Mr. Speaker, when is this Liberal government going to run out of family and friends to name as independent <laughs> officers? Yeah. The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the ski buddy uh, that, he re that the Honourable Member refers to uh, is David Johnson. Uh, an eminent Canadian who who opened a Confucius Center at the University of Waterloo in 2006. Yeah, and he was the Governor General when Trudeau, when there was a CSIS intercepted communication between the PRC and a Chinese billionaire to funnel money into the Trudeau Foundation. He was he was already in government and maybe a target of of this whole thing, Mark Holland. So mm, I'm not I'm not going with you there, sir. Not at all. Pointing out the continual conflict of interests and the people that the Liberals put in place are more fixers than they are people who are looking at getting to the bottom of this whole thing um, is good. I'm glad, I'm glad people are pointing this out. Here is uh, Polyev again. He's sharing this screenshot. It says, Interim Ethics Commissioner with Family Connection to Intergovernmental Affairs Minister LeBlanc raises red flags for critics. Uh, Martin Richards, who became interim ethics commissioner effective on March 27, is the sister-in-law of intergovernmental affairs minister Dominic LeBlanc. And so that's that's inconvenient. That's not great, right? And that's interesting to note because um, you would think that that would be a conflict of interest. And Polyev says, a minister who was already found guilty of breaking the ethics law gets his sister-in-law the job of independent ethics commissioner to rule on future allegations against him. Does anything surprise you with these guys? So yeah, it's, it is very frustrating as a Canadian taxpayer to look at this kind of um, cronyism, this uh, obvious conflict of interest being perpetrated in front of us. It's meant to demoralize, I think, but I just, I just lose respect for the government. I can't believe these liberals are going to, are, are holding on to power as effectively as they are. And they really are. It's really frustrating. Um, True North reports, when is this liberal government going to run out of family and friends to name as an independent officers? Um, conservative leader Pierre Polyev slams Trudeau government's appointment of David Johnston to investigate foreign election interference. And Dean says, one of Trudeau's weddings, one of Trudeau's wedding groomsmen rose to answer. I'm serious. So family ties abound. These, these liberals put people in place who have an inherent conflict of interest because they're beholden to them. They're family friends. They're family, just family, full stop. Pretty wild. Um, Anthony says, I remember the good old days of the Harper government when conservative MPs were marched out in cuffs and shackles. Good times. Sorry, you were asking something about corruption? <laughs> Um, and Dan McTeague says, any judges not appointed by liberal liberals available these days? Hearing there's a shortage of ethics counselors who would act ethically, so Trudeau appointed his minister's sister-in-law. That minister happens to be one of Trudeau's closest allies and friends, both sons of liberal politicians. So, I mean, that's very interesting, right? Family ties, sons, daughters, wives, um, sister-in-laws, sisters, brothers, right? Aletha Raj says she might be a great lawyer, but this is not appropriate. And it's surprising it didn't raise enough red flags or raise enough flags. Surprising. Have you been paying attention? She hasn't. She's been paying, taking, 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 taking paychecks <laughs> um, from, from liberals, I think probably. Um, but now she says, hold on a second. This isn't ethical. And that's supposed to be the ethics commissioner. It's in the name Goodness me. Um, so Kevin Vong and uh, Mark Gerritsen. Gerritsen challenged Vong to a fight outside, uh, which is interesting. A whole bunch of Canadians tried to take him up on that, tried to take Mark Gerritsen up on that, but he doesn't allow people to reply to his social media anymore, at least not on Twitter, um, because I guess he keeps getting ratioed and people are calling him out because he threatened to fight Kevin Vong. <laughs> 
And Kevin Vong is now responding to um, an article that was in the Kingstonist. I'm not going to read through the article, but Kevin does. He says, this article is so rife with mistakes that I don't even know where to begin to correct all the inaccuracies. But I do feel compelled to, at minimum, inform the Kingstonist who described me as a BC MP that Toronto is actually in Ontario. Um, he says, it's no surprise that this was published in the Whig Standard. Who'd have known that Toronto is a city in the capital, is a city in and the capital of Ontario and not British Columbia. So they've got it printed here that that Kevin Vong is a BC MP. Um, pretty interesting. And misinformation, disinformation, is it on purpose? Is it to mislead? Is it to, um, is it to be disrespectful to MP Vong? I don't know. It's very interesting. Here's a uh, Biden family, uh, China tie-in. And uh, this person says, the Biden family received a million dollars from convicted Chinese spy Patrick Ho. Hunter called him the spy chief of China and President Joe Biden was caught on a voicemail talking to Hunter about their business. The Bidens failed to register with the Foreign Agent Registration Act, which means that any money they earned and exchanged among themselves was illegally obtained. Um, if the Trump family committed these FARA violations and money laundering crimes, they would face decades in prison. Instead, the Biden family's crimes are ignored by the corporate media and concealed by the Department of Justice. So it's interesting because that sounds familiar. I don't know where I've heard that story before. You say your sister-in-law is the <laughs> ethics commissioner. Eh? Hmm. Um, hello, everyone. Thanks for watching. You can check out full episodes of Canada Poly every day at canadapoly.com. You can also go to canadapoly.com and pick up a ticket for a live event. The live event is taking place in Streetsville and the location will be provided to ticket holders. Um, but you can check out a live event. Um, Dr. Patrick Phillips, uh, Sarah C., and Scarlett Martin. I'm sorry, Sarah. I don't know what you, I can't say your last name, and I'm terrible at saying last names. Um, we'll be joining Greg Wycliffe and myself for a an uncensored round table. It would be lovely if you could join us. Um, tickets at CanadaPoly.com. And if you live in Toronto, Mississauga, Milton, GTA, Hamilton, Guelph, Kitchener, Cambridge, um, it's probably well worth the drive to... Streetsville. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody, and have a wonderful, wonderful day.